Okay, our next type of SMI implementation bug is called a confused deputy attack. And the mitigations are going to be all of these sort of common mitigations, plus one extra one that has to do with the particulars of this attack, which we'll talk about now. First, if you haven't heard of it before, the confused deputy attack is a general class of logic vulnerabilities. And it basically has to do with when there's interactions between a privileged entity, which is the deputy, and the unprivileged entity, which is the notional inmate here. So, you know, someone's jailed, someone's deprivileged, someone's on a timeout. And so they ask the deputy to do something, and the deputy may think this is an innocuous action that, you know, doesn't give the inmate any particular advantage. But if it does give them an advantage, and if it does achieve something they couldn't achieve on their own from behind bars, then this is a confused deputy because they've just done something that the attacker, the inmate, couldn't do on their own. So confused deputy attacks were initially considered in the context of operating systems because, of course, you know, you have the situation of unprivileged user space code interacting with a privileged kernel. Or you could have, you know, a unprivileged non-root process interacting with a root process. But of course, when it comes to privilege, user space is to kernel as kernel is to SMM. SMM has more privilege and power, more capability to access all physical memory everywhere without inspection. So in the context of SMI vulnerabilities, what does this look like? So before we talked about how port B2 can be used as a sort of system call interface and B3 can hold an extra byte of data, but frequently that, you know, one byte of data in B3 and one byte of data in B2 is not enough to provide a useful system call interface. And so what vendors tend to do is they will use the general purpose registers as the additional parameters for that notional system call. So they can basically, you know, write to port B2, but before they do that, they fill in some data in some general purpose registers. Then when the SMI handler is invoked, it expects that according to, you know, whatever protocol the you know, vendor has decided to create, it expects that there, you know, might be for port B2 write of, you know, seven, they expect a pointer in RBX and a pointer in RCX. For port B2 uh, write of eight, they maybe only expect a pointer in RAX. So they get to decide what the protocol is, how the system calls work, and so forth. But if you imagine that they're passing around pointers, well, the pointers are going to point to some sort of memory, and the person outside of SMM probably is not going to know where anything is in SMRAM because they can't see it, so they're not going to be pointing in there. So they're probably going to be pointing at some sort of uh, data structure out in operating system memory, and then the SMRAM, or sorry, the SMI handler may read from that data or it may write to that data. If it's the case that the SMI handler looks at some pointer and then says, oh yeah, I'm going to write to wherever you tell me to write, well, that's a bad time because if the attacker points it inside of SMRAM and if the SMI handler just naively writes wherever the attacker controlled pointer says, then they could be clobbering themselves in SMRAM, writing, you know, a, uh, you know, single byte to change some configuration data, a single byte to change SM base in the save state area, things like that. So that's not a good time. Uh, this has been mitigated a little bit in the open source code by the introduction of a call to SMM is buffer outside of SMM valid. And that checks to make sure that, you know, wherever it's trying to write to should be straight up outside of SMRAM, so it's not clobbering itself in SMRAM. But that's really just kind of a partial mitigation, right? Because there are other things, other privileged entities, especially in, you know, modern Windows systems with virtualization-based security. If the SMI handler just says, oh, it's not an SMM, so it's not my problem, and it just writes wherever an attacker says, then the attacker who's in a jailed operating system inside of virtualization-based security could go ahead and write outside of that, you know, virtualization jail and clobber the hypervisor, clobber the more privileged virtualization system, uh, virtual machines. So yeah, like uh, this is a general ongoing problem, essentially. Uh, just the, the general idea of SMI handlers not properly treating attacker-controlled input safely. And for this one, there's not, you know, a really good solution for uh, not clobbering anything sensitive outside in OS land, other than the idea that uh, the system call interface between operating systems and SMM needs to be more restrictive, needs to have 
you know, fixed expectations of there has to be exactly this physical address is always only used for input and output. The SMI handler can make sure that, you know, nothing else is there, that kind of thing. So that was the confused deputy attacks. All of the same defensive things apply, auditing the code, privilege reduction, right? You could see how if an STM or page tables restricted the RAM that SMI handler could write to, then for instance, you know, it wouldn't be able to clobber uh, the hypervisor memory, right? The hypervisor memory would just be straight up outside of its range of memory it could write to. And then things like PPAM, if the attacker used Confused Deputy to write into SMRAM and then get code execution there, well, the PPAM should hopefully detect that. And then again, checking for overlap with, you know, whether pointers point inside of SMRAM, it would be clobbering itself, or whether they point to, you know, operating system regions that the SMI handler somehow knows shouldn't be written to, uh, or better yet, just create a reserved region so it doesn't have to worry about that.